We are Makilala TV, the first Filipino-American TV talk show in the New York metro area. Get to know us as we talk to the community leaders, innovators, advocates, and emerging artists who affect Filipino-American life. The story of Billy Elliot, the English boy who aspired and became a ballet dancer, is kind of like the story of our two guests, Jeffrey Sirio and Emil Jose Kelso. They came to know ballet at a young age, fell in love with it, and decided they want to be a ballet dancer. Jeffrey went to ballet school at age nine, Emil earlier at age three. By comparison, the fictional Billy Elliot, who started at 11, is somewhat of a late bloomer. Today, Jeffrey is the principal dancer at the American Ballet Theater, founded in 1939, and has such a rich and revered history. Emil has starred in George Balanchine's The Nutcracker at the Lincoln Center, where he played the leading role of the prince, a much sought after role for dancers. Ballet has traditionally been a girl's dance, but Jeffrey and Emil are out there making it more inclusive. Joining me in today's discussion is my co-host, Rochelle Ocampo, who also studied ballet at a young age, <laughs> and Trisha Capistrano, who is a writer and who is the mother of Emil. Our friend Jen is on leave and will be joining us next month. Welcome to Makilala. Thank Jeffrey, you. Emil, and Trisha. Thank you. Thank you for um, us. Let's start with Jeffrey. I okay. know that you started ballet by watching your sister Leah in central Pennsylvania. That's correct. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, so. Um, I was one of those little soccer brothers <laughs> at age nine and yeah. um, was always at the ballet school where um, my sister was training at the time. What got you hooked? What got me hooked? Um, you know, one day I was uh, at home and my mom said, do you want to try something else? Do you want to try a different sport? Do you want to try art class? Whatever you want. Hmm. I said, why don't I try a ballet class? And she said, what? <laughs> and so, uh, it was a spur of the moment. Yeah, yeah, it was a spur of the moment. I, really? I was like, why not? Like, can I try it? And she was like, of course you can. And so I um, took my first class, and I don't think I was, I fell in love with it right away. Oh, okay. But um, it was one of those things where I had six other boys in my class. And being a homeschooler, mm -hmm. I uh, didn't have many friends outside of, of whatever I was doing with mm -hmm. sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so. I saw that as an uh, opportunity to make friends, and um, it was oh. very fun. And uh, I think by age 14, and I you really got was it. like, I really like this. There's no turning back anymore. There's no <laughs> <turning> back. <laughs> <laughs> what about Emil? Um, How did you get started? Um, I really started when I um, watched The Nutcracker, um, oh. when I was around maybe two. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I watched The Nutcracker. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And I saw... Um, the kids on stage, and I was like, um, that will be me. That's easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's me or something. That. <laughs> so, um, that's when I really wanted to start, and I started in um, Dance Theory of Harlem, and then it went off from there. Oh, that's right. Uh, Trisha, you were responsible for initiating Emil into the world of ballet. Yes. In the same way that <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey's mom yes. was also responsible <laughs> in his case, right? Yeah, yeah Emil course. actually um, was in the Halloween party and he was dancing for like 30 minutes where all the kids, you know, dropped off after two minutes. So that's when we realized that, oh my God, we have to sign him up for a dance class. That's wow. awesome. <laughs> so um, did, you, did you like it right away? No. I thought it was kind of dull when like, <laughs> When you when they were giving out the steps, and I really just wanted to run around the room, but as I like matured and I like really learned about like the new movements and how you can express yourself through dance and mm -hmm. movement, I really started to like it more. What so at what age would that be when you came to terms with it? I think maybe ten. Oh, okay. So it was like that instantaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Rochelle yeah. was uh, telling us about her experience <laughs> learning ballet. <laughs> very at an brief. Early age. <laughs> yes, very brief. But it was n it was like on a Saturday, like after like Saturday classes, where I actually thought I really liked ballet, and then I realized I was like, this 
I don't know if I like this because literally for 20 minutes out of the hour, I was doing this movement. <laughs> <laughs> like the camera, the please. <laughs> yeah, the court, literally the, the teacher was like, okay, five more minutes. I was like, this has been going on way too long. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go do gymnastics instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that, that how you really extent. start? The, you really have, <laughs> you, you really have to flex your feet, right? For sure. For yeah, yeah that's right. Get them warmed up. Get them well, all ready. Yeah. Yes, warmed up because you don't want to get any injuries. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the questions I really wanted to find out. Have yeah. you had any major injuries? Yes. Yeah. I don't even want to <laughs> say that. <loud>. <laughs> I might be responsible. Uh, yeah. Um, for myself, I've broken my foot, my fifth metatarsal. Um, I've had multiple sprains on each foot. Um, what else? I've had a sublex shoulder. Wait, what is? A sublex that? is when you, uh, your arm comes out of socket and then oh goes back God. in. Hmm. Um, oh really? It yeah. goes back in? <laughs> yeah, that's a sublex. So yeah. it, hey. didn't f it didn't fully come out, but it went out and then went back in. Your, your dad's a chiropractor. Did he Correct. help with any of your injuries? <laughs> For sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like free He's medical care. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Um, yeah, right out, right when I was born, I basically have been adjusted. That's right. Yeah. Emil, what was what was training like? Um, Tell us the difficult part about training. Uh, definitely, like it being so repetitive that there's like, it, there's no such thing as perfect. It's uh -huh. always one more thing that you have to remember. So mm. it's it's kind of like there's a lot of anxiety when you're doing it. And how many days? How many days do you do practice? Uh, currently, only five times a week. Only, <laughs> only, <laughs> only so you five have times. You have your weekends for your parents. Yeah, <laughs> I have <laughs> friends who have like two classes six times a day. So. Oh. And how many hours a day is that? Um, just an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Oh. Okay. Five times a week. So. And you always go with Emil. Um, Wait, when Emil was younger, my husband and I would take him. But mm -hmm. now that he's much older, I think when you turn twelve, he would take the subway by himself mm -hmm. in the bus. So, do you um, do you what do you call this? What do you say when people make the remark that you know ballet is only for girls, Jeffrey? Mm -hmm. Me? Uh, I'm sure you get that a lot. Actually, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Wait, yeah. No. Um, you mean people are I more enlightened an now? I think it's an aesthetic that a lot of people, it was a thing that people said. Uh, okay. um, for myself, I was always encouraged to do what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. Um, and, s and telling you about like how I had six boys in, in yeah, my class, yeah, my starting true. class, mm -hmm. it was just a normal thing for us to take ballet. It yeah, was just didn't matter what you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't hear that a lot. As I was getting older, I thought I would. Um, mm -hmm. And then when people ask me, oh, what is your professional career? And I say, I'm a ballet dancer. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's I've seen right. The Nutcracker. I've seen Swan oh, Lake. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Or they're like, wow, that's so cool. Do you meet a lot of artists? And I'm, yeah, I say, yes, of course. I've, I've met so many people. I've gotten to travel to so mm -hmm. many different mm -hmm. places um, at the age I am. So. I think of myself very blessed to yeah, be able to are. do what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. What about you, Emil? Have you heard the comment about, you know, ballets for girls? Mm, well, I've heard of the stereotype, but the no uh, one very directly has ever yeah. told me that it's for girls. I used to have like this bag that had my the logo, and then I'd always flip it over so that no one could see <laughs> the sign. But um, as I grew older, um, no one ever really bothered oh, me. Okay, yeah. So I ended up like being more comfortable with it, sharing mm -hmm. it. People ever ask me, "What do you do after school?" Yeah, what's yeah. And, and also being in a pr progressive city, it's yeah, it it's is. Yeah. yeah, it's easier, especially for Emil's age. Like a lot of kids growing up, mm -hmm. they don't really care anymore. But I in know. our community, there's that yeah. notion that ballet is for rich people and mm. ballet is for mm. girls, right, Trisha? Yeah. Growing up, we we grew up in the probably in the same. Yeah, you at the time. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, my mom actually forced me to do ballet, and and I didn't really like it. And then she signed me up again, <laughs> even if I didn't <laughs> like it. Um, but yeah, we've been. I've been so well. We've been so fortunate living in New York City that mm -hmm. there's all these uh, programs for young kids. And then um, in New York City, actually, a lot of the boys' ballet programs are free. Mm -hmm. So, oh. so it it's such a blessing for for New York City kids. Um, and even New York, people in the tri-state area, 
there, there's all these different programs, different opportunities, mm -hmm. um, not just in ballet, but modern dance. And it looks great. like I'm the only one in this panel <laughs> who did not take up ballet. <laughs> 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 anyway, how do you guys uh, prepare for a performance? Jeffrey, do you have any rituals? Yeah. Um, how do you get into, into the your zone. role? Yeah, yeah, into the role. Uh, depending if it's like, so say for like I have a week or two before, I'm just, I will be prepping and doing all the, the normal rehearsals mm -hmm. and going over my steps if I need to. Uh, but say like come show day, um, I usually have a good meal before I start the show, get there fairly early, I warm up, do my makeup. Um, I do listen to a lot of music, so I like to stay in my own, uh, my own head. Mm -hmm. um, and then before I go on, I just say a little prayer and um, do, what, do what I have to do. Do you call up your mom and say, hey, I'm about to go on stage? Actually, <laughs> sometimes I'll call, her, uh, okay, I'll call yeah. her, but uh, usually she just sends me a text and just okay. says, uh, good luck. And do you uh, avoid certain negative people, like, out of my life for now? Um, Turn off. Uh, it all depends on <laughs> if, like, I'm going through something negative at the time. Uh, okay, but yeah. um, most people are very encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, they're always saying good luck or um, merd, which is, like, a ballet term or toy toy toy. What, toy. Is, what is oh, it? What Mered, is it? Which is means uh Married? How do you spell it? Oh <laughs> <laughs> which uh M E R D E Mered. It's like Merde. It's like Merde. Ah oh, yes. so what does that mean? Death, it's, isn't it? Uh, is it death? so it's an old poop. term. Yeah, it's an old term. It means poop, basically. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> um Why it's would that an old term back, Why would back term in theater come up? theater. Uh -huh. It's uh when there was because of all the carriages and the horses taking the people to the theater, there was all the poop in front of the theater. Mm -hmm. And it was a sign that it was a full house. Oh, and so wow. the, that's where the original term It's comes like from. break a leg. Uh, uh, another version yeah. of break yeah. a leg. Yeah. Break a leg, good luck, <laughs> merit. And also in, uh, in Europe, they say toy toy, which I don't know what the Well, what is toy toy? I don't what know. What oh, language I is that? Have you heard that? I haven't heard yeah. that one. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know where, where it's from. <laughs> but, <laughs> Is that French? Is yeah. It? Oh, okay. Yeah, like Merde. Oh, like yeah. Merde. Can I ask uh, go ahead. what kind of music you listen to when you're preparing? Yeah, it all, it all depends on the day. Um, I like house music. I like hip-hop music. Um, it all depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. What about Emil? How do you prepare for a role? Oh, well, we usually start months in advance. Mm -hmm. um, really just practicing, going over it constantly. Um, and then, like, like the day of, I usually like to relax. So I get there like an hour early. We all talk to one another. We like joke around. We really try to just relieve stress so that we're not so stressful when the time comes and just get comfortable. Like, And you were actually the principal dancer for, you were the prince, like the key role yeah. of the Nutcracker. Yeah. How was that feeling of being in that position? And, uh, and when you found out that you will be playing yeah. the <laughs> The prince, what was that like? Um, when I found out, I'm like one of those people when you tell me good things, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, um, I was really excited. I was really happy. How um, did you break the news to your parents? Um, I kind of just walked up to them and said, oh, I'm the prince. <laughs> 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 it's like, matter of fact, oh, I'm the prince, mom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Trisha, do you recall that day? It, it was. We, I think we were <laughs> waiting four or five hours. Uh, we were told that we would, we can show up and then Emil could audition for a part. Um, but we didn't know what part he was being considered for. So we were waiting for a long, long time mm -hmm. and not knowing that I think like five, ten minutes into it, they had already told you you were going to be the prince. Wow. Yeah. Was it competitive to get that role? No, um, they actually emailed us telling us you should come because um, in the Nutcracker, you're not allowed to do uh, more than, uh, you're allowed to do the part, but you can't do it more than twice. Oh. So we didn't really know what part I was going to do because they asked us to come for um, you like can't the first act. Keep it, you can't do it twice. Well, he, yeah. was, in he was in the party scene mm -hmm. two times before. And then we had gotten email saying, you know, you should show up. Oh. So we weren't sure what part he would play mm -hmm. because he had oh. already been in the party scene mm -hmm. two times. Oh, okay. So we were thinking maybe, but we weren't sure. But there were all these parents there, I'm sure. Of course. So all but of us was, parents were But he was being considered 
together with other people, with other boys? Yeah, there are three of us. Oh, three. okay. Yeah. But w we all got the part. It was like. Oh, you would be alternating yeah. the role. Yeah. Oh, so that's, not, that's nice. We're not doing it every day. Yeah. So, Trisha, are there a lot of Filipino American boys in ballet, in the world of ballet? Um, I, I know Just Jeffrey and <laughs> then <laughs> and Emil. <I> <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so interesting. My husband happened to sit next to the Lola of Anthony Huxley. Um, oh, wow. So that's how we found out Anthony was uh, is Filipino American yeah, yeah, yeah. too. Oh, and then okay. uh, Georgina Pascaguin mm -hmm. is also Filipino American. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you know any do other? Do you know any other ballet, ballet dancer who's male? Well, in, oh, male. Who's a male? Oh, well, I, I know this uh, guy, Roberto Villanueva. He founded Balasol. Balasol. Okay. Um, it's a ballet d uh, company for, um, um, you know, uh, people with different body types. You know how oh, we associate yeah. ballet with slim bodies, mm. you know, a certain height, a certain color, a certain look. Yeah. But in his company, he brings in all the different, um, it, it's, it calls it a diversity of um looks but jeffrey you said that you actually have your own company yeah yeah that's correct tell us about that. serial collective serial yeah. collective so it was co-founded with my sister leah Syria, mm -hmm. um and we wanted to create a we kind of wanted to create something for the summer um since a lot of professional dancers have time off mm -hmm. um and so we decided to since i since I choreograph, we decided that, you know, why don't we make a choreographic company, mm -hmm. small base, project base. Um, and we always found that we always wanted to collaborate with other artists. And so our whole, whole ideal of the, the company is to collaborate with artists and to have people come in and be able to speak their voice in the, um, the way they would want to without restriction. And so, um, yeah, we if we're going on our third season, and it's mm. pretty. I pretty I incredible. thought that uh, the Serio uh, Collective was providing some kind of a training for younger mm. dancers. Do you also do that for dancers We'd who would want to get into ballet? You know, we've thought about it in in the years to come. Mm -hmm. I think we're thinking about maybe making it for younger professionals oh to okay. come in mm -hmm. and to. Uh, possibly work with choreographers that they they want to work with mm -hmm. wow yeah wow. so guys how do you take care of your feet are there special <laughs> are there special um, exercises and um i don't know rituals, regimen yeah. rituals mm -hmm. mm. because you're always on your feet <laughs> well like rochelle said this is <laughs> sometimes good she um, wasn't <laughs> she wasn't kidding <laughs> 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 um rolling your feet on a ball like a yoga ball, oh, okay. and I've also heard of like Epsom salt or mm. ev elevation heating. Oh, how, how is that? How, how does that work? Uh, like you, well, it's Just more for like the thighs or the legs, and you mm -hmm. put it like around, and then like you put it in, and then it like heats up your leg. You do it by yourself, or does your mom help you? Oh, I do it by myself. Oh. It's <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> and um, what is your more um, most exciting, memorable role? on stage, Jeffrey. Memorable role. Um, I was talking about this earlier. Um, I well, I love a lot of the parts that I have done. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like the the bronze idol in La Bayadere. It's pretty memorable um, since you get painted all in gold paint. Oh, what? Wow. And then you dance with all that paint on, um, which is pretty, pretty fun. But mm -hmm. I love my, actually my, Probably, I thought about it, and my favorite part is probably Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet. Oh. What? So. You played in Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. Wow. So it's probably one of my favorite roles to play, mm -hmm. um, just because of that personality of the, the role. Wow. Actually, Emil, you have a question for Jeffrey. Oh. Because you are sort of <laughs> in the same world. <laughs> yeah. And he is a fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was wondering um, if... Or will you incorporate like Filipino culture in your company with Leah? Interesting, very good question. Yeah, flipping the culture. Um, in which way? What like do you in mean? costumes or in like costume. maybe like or um, steps, right? The what's it called? Like pinnacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I've never even thought about that, but 
it could be um, something that would be very interesting to me. Um, I think that we obviously love, Leah and I love our culture. Um, we don't know much about it since we are very Americanized, mm -hmm. but uh, would love to incorporate anything that um, is from the F Filipino Filipin. heritage, yeah. Um, and hopefully there are artists out there that would like to collaborate with us, and we are very open to that. I cannot even imagine how you can Bali ice tinikling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be creative <laughs> enough. <laughs> Definitely. I know. Right. Yeah. Or maybe pan pandango sa or pandango ilaw, sa ilaw, ilaw right? with the candles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be, would be nice. Really yeah. nice yeah. And there are other dances. Beautiful. It's yeah. something to look into, yeah. for sure. Oh That's gosh. right. Any other question, Emil? You, you <laughs> I think you have a question for him, like, what was your parents' role in getting you to dance? But he already replied to that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, you said your parents are actually dancers. Well, how did that whole thing start with yeah, your parents? Yeah, yeah. My parents met socially dancing. It's in the genes. In the <laughs> 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 in doing the hustle. So um, my parents loved dancing. They weren't in ballet or um, you know, in that realm, but they were in the social kind of mm -hmm. dance scene. Wow. So I guess the coordination is there, and we've, they've passed that down to us, so, uh, yeah. But Jeffrey started with, uh, in Pennsylvania, and then he moved to Boston, Correct. right? Yeah. Uh, you were in Boston for a long time. Yeah, almost seven years. S uh, seven seven years, years, yeah. And then you moved to New York for the moved EBT. New York, yeah. That's right. So your experience in Boston, how did that uh, deepen your knowledge of ballet? Yeah, it, um, it definitely deepened my knowledge just because Boston has a mixed rep of dance. Mm -hmm. and um, So we do classical, we do Balanchine, um, and then we do choreographic work, mm -hmm. which that could be neoclassical or contemporary work. Okay. And so it's really uh, opened my eyes to the whole dance world mm -hmm. instead of just one style of ballet. Um, and that's, I think, why I have was able to start my own company and, and create mm -hmm. um, on my own dancers. Um, but it's definitely given me um, a sense of, of knowledge mm -hmm. so that I was ready to move on to the next company. You, you mentioned Balanchine, and mm -hmm. uh, Emil here is with uh, Lincoln Center, where Balanchine is some kind of um, the icon, right? Mm -hmm. And he says he has, there's a special technique to Balanchine dancing. Mm -hmm. You want to explain that further, Emil? Um, well, he, he started, I think, in Russia. Yeah, he mm -hmm. started in Russia. And um, he moved on in to America, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, he wanted a different style. So he created SAB so that he wouldn't have to go around the world trying to look for people oh, to okay. incorporate in his company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this way, um, the school can feed in to the company, mm -hmm. so that way um, he can get his technique and um, you know really work on like dancing rather than teaching everyone the technique. You, you want to show us what the difference is in the hand movement? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's different hand movements. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what uh, he was telling us. Well, like the starter movement is like this. Uh, it's like practicing to get all your fingers round. Oh, okay. Um, and then later, and then you want the pinky out just to remember, and then later like. It opens up doing like that oh. sometimes. Huh. Did you yeah. know that? I'm sure I you did. did. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, um, I mean, it's right. Like, I yeah, was yeah. I was taught mm -hmm. very round, like hands. Oh, okay. And then with classical ballet, you're you're actually taught with like a very much more straight and oh. straight fingers and thumb under, with you know with the balancing. You eventually start with your finger like together, right? Is that correct? Um, and then open it up. Wow, I didn't know You never got to that part. I didn't get to that part. I just got to the stretching. Trisha, do you have any question for um, for our panelists? Well, I, I have a weird question. So, <laughs> 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 so I watched first position that uh, it's it's this movie about four kids um, auditioning for parts. Uh, well, or uh, competing at the different ballet competitions. Mm -hmm. So, Jeffrey, do you use mm -hmm. a foot stretcher? Do I use a foot stretcher? <laughs> <laughs> well, what would a foot stretcher do? So, uh, well, just to describe it, it's a piece of wood, mm -hmm. and then there's like um, a curved part where you can practice your arch. It just mm -hmm. So we bought it for Emil, but 
it seems so painful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We don't do we have to, to do it. it. Yeah. Um, Did you go through that? When I was a kid, foot stretcher wasn't uh, too big, but a lot of people did stretch at other people's feet. Um, but I never used one personally. Okay. And that makes uh, me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my teacher always told us to use the TheraBand to strengthen the muscles instead of stretching them. Um, of course, you have to stretch. You mean you used that on Emil? We bought it because we saw it in the movie. Yeah. Oh. And then when he was tr trying to use it, it just looked. He never <laughs> complained, but it looked painful oh, to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Like the only thing that I could see in terms of my, my experience with ba ballet, other than when I was little, is that movie, Center Stage. It's literally been like, yeah. oh, a ballet movie. yes. I saw the Black Swan, too, and I, I thought it was, yeah. <laughs> 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 like oh, that, that, was that was intense. Oh, yeah, that uh, was intense and dark. <laughs> I thought it was very dark. Yeah. <laughs> is the ballet world um, full of intrigues? <laughs> yeah. A lot of chismes with uh, a lot of people in between because there's you just hang out with each other. Like yeah, nonstop. all the time. Yeah. It's it's not as like severe as <laughs> oh. Black Swan. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not <dramatic>. at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much, guys. Of um, thank you. We are about to wind down our show, and um, thank you for coming down and sharing your stories with us. Your um, your stories are sound very excruciating, but also very exciting, and um, we hope to catch your shows very soon. And thank you, Tricia, for um, your thoughts from the point of view of a, pa a parent who is very encouraging thank you for having of me. her mm -hmm. son's passion. We hope you tune in again for another episode of Makilala here on Manhattan Neighborhood Network.